In this tutorial we will learn how to model a sword from a line drawing. By now you should be familiar with moving the camera as well as geometry around the scene um, as well as being able to resolve basic problems when you hit the wrong keyboard button. This is all covered in my intro to Maya with Lego tutorial which I've linked to below. I chose this Final Fantasy design as it will force us to learn a good range of fundamental tools and abilities that should enable you to model almost any hard surface object that you can imagine. I, you should be able to see the buttons I'm pressing up here. Um, as well, a side note for Mac users, when I say the control button, I obviously mean the command button and vice versa. You will first need to download the line drawing of the sword, which I've linked to in the description below, and put it in the following location. This is the same on both PC and on Mac, but once you've got the image, go to your documents folder, then into the Maya folder, then into projects, then into default, unless you've created another project directory, but we'll put it in default for now, and then go into source images and paste the sword outlines into source images. Now, I just want to check that Maya is looking at this default uh, project directory. To check this I'll go to file and I'll hit set project and I will click once on the project that I want Maya to focus on for this lesson which is the default folder for now. I will hit set. This means that now if I want to import the image plane it should be there waiting for us to use. So to import your image plane into Maya so that we can sort of trace over it, you want to hit the space bar, get to I show your four views, and you need to go to your top view. So move your mouse over the top view and hit the space bar. Now go to the word view here, just above your viewport, and go to image plane, import image, and then find your sword outlines image to import. We're gonna hit open on this. And you can see that this has been placed down in the top view, which means if we spacebar to the perspective view, so that spacebar, move your mouse to perspective, hit the spacebar again, and if you spin around, you should be able to see it here. At the moment, it's exactly in the middle of the grid, which later on, when we create 2D shapes like this, it will kind of get annoying, and we won't be able to see what's what, um, and our geometry will sort of phase through it a bit. So to stop this from happening, we're gonna click on the image plane for the sword, and move it down. So I'm gonna hit W for move. I'm gonna move it down just a little bit, just maybe a few pixels down like that. It's pretty much still just beneath the grid, but it needs to be far enough down so that when you create new shapes, you can see them on top straight away. I'm gonna leave it at the size that it is. It seems to fit nicely into this grid. Now we're gonna to go to create our first shape, but before we do that, we can see that our shelf up here that we're gonna to want to use is, is so busy, just full of so many different tools, it's overwhelming for newcomers to Maya. So we're gonna create a brand new shelf and add only the buttons that we use in this lesson. And we'll add a button every time we use a new tool or command. To create a new shelf, uh, look for this little cog icon here, just to the left of your shelf, there's a very small cog and we can click on that and go down to new shelf. Um, you ask you to give it a name. You're not, you're not allowed to use any spaces. You can use underscores if you want. I'm gonna put my own name in there and hit okay. Your shelf, it will, look, it will look like it's now completely disappeared and all the buttons have gone. Don't worry, they're still there. If you go to the poly modeling tab, you'll see all of these shapes and everything's still there. Um, but now at the end, you'll have a new tab with your name on it that you can click on and we can now um, start to fill this up. So to add a button to your shelf, you usually find it from the menu up here whilst, and then hold Command or Control Shift on the keyboard. So that's Control Shift for a PC, Command Shift for a Mac. Let's test this now with two really important buttons. These buttons won't actually create anything, but they will stop problems from happening later on. So the most important one I find is to make sure that Delete History is on your shelf. To do this, you do edit at the top. Now I'm going to hold control shift on my keyboard and look for delete all by type. That's edit, delete all by type and then history. Click on history there. If you just click away from this, you'll see that there is now a new button on your shelf. It hasn't applied this command yet, but it is now there on our shelf. Let's also add one more tool, which is the center pivot tool, which should be on everyone's shelf. So I'm going to go to modify for this one. Now I'm going to hold control shift 
or Command Shift on a Mac and do Center Pivot and then let go of my mouse and then let go of the keyboard and you can see CP for Center Pivot has been added. We'll be using this later on. So next we're going to create a cube. Before I add it to the shelf, I'm just going to have a go at creating it like this. I'm going to go to Create, Polygon Primitives, and then Cube. The moment you let go on Cube, it will appear in the middle of your scene like this. Before we carry on, just make sure you go back to your Move to your Cursor tool here, which allows you to select objects instead of create new ones, and click on your cube. You can then move it to where you want it to go with hitting W and then moving it down the sword. Every time we make a new shape, it will appear in the middle of our grid like this. So whatever shape I make, if I create a donut or whatever, it always appears in the middle of your grid, and then you have to move it manually to wherever you are in the scene. If you're, if you're working on like a large house or a computer game map, you often have to move these very far from the middle of the grid to where they need to be. So I prefer to turn on something called interactive creation. You can see it's a lot more effective and accurate. So I'm gonna delete the cube I just made, and I'm gonna now do this. I'm gonna create, polygon primitives and go down to where it says interactive creation and turn that on. Now when I go to create polygon primitives, I'm just checking that's on, and go to cube, a cube won't immediately appear on our grid but we get this message saying drag a base on a grid and then pull the mouse up. So I'm going to move my mouse over to this area of the sword here and drag it out to match the shape roughly and let go. Your icon will now change and you'll see this message saying drag up to set height. So I'm just going to move my mouse over the base of the shape. Make sure your mouse is on it first. Click and hold and then drag up like this to the desired height. Then you can let go of your mouse when you're done. I find this a lot more intuitive and I can indeed um, draw new shapes anywhere I happen to be in the scene without looking for the middle of the grid. So let's add the cube to our shelf now. We're going to go to Control Shift or Command Shift and create polygon primitives and while holding control shift click on or let go of cube the cube on the shelf will now always have interactive creation on which is really handy now we need to create a cylinder for the grip of this sword so we're going to go to add this to our shelf i'm going to do create polygon primitives and whilst holding control shift i'm going to click on or let go on cylinder now i'm going to let go of control shift and the cylinder is now on the shelf. So the cylinder, I could move my mouse over to the sword here and just drag out to match the, the width of the cylinder. And then I can drag up to set the height. It's obviously at the wrong angle. We know that we can rotate this. But before I show you that, I want to show you another quick trick on how to create shapes quickly. You could, instead of just clicking and then dragging up, you could click on a shape. Then whilst holding shift on the keyboard, drag and immediately it creates a 3d shape without you having to drag up for height so same with the cube if you click and drag a cube or holding shift on the keyboard it drags it up like this whilst keeping the base on the grid which is quite a nice way of creating perfect cubes if you want perfect cubes in interactive creation mode anyway so back to our cylinder you create the cylinder any which way you like i'm going to just hold shift try that and that seems to be about right um, i'm going to do r for size to roughly stretch it up to the right height and then rotate it exactly by 90 degrees. So I'll hit E for rotate, and to check that it's by gonna go by 90 degrees, I could go to my channel box up here, or channel box over here, and randomly rotate an axis and just see which one of these numbers is changing. I can see it's rotate Z, that's the one that's changing. So I'm gonna hit Command Z for undo, so it's perfectly straight up again. And then I'll hold J on the keyboard first, I'm now holding J for a long time. While holding J, I'm now gonna spin this around with one of these lines and until it's exactly 90 degrees. And you can see on the right there, that number changes as I'm dragging this around. I could of course go in here and just immediately change this to 90 degrees if I want, but I find that holding J is more intuitive. Alternatively, you could hit the space bar and go to let's say your side view here. And you could create, if I hit four on the keyboard so I can see through my shapes, I could create a cylinder from the side view. I'm going to hold shift as I drag this new cylinder out so that it creates a 3D shape automatically. Now if I go back to my 3D view, you can see it's created a cylinder that's already on the side view like this. So space bar into your side view can be useful when creating cylinders and shapes like that. I'm just going to use uh, this uh, top one for now. I'll move it down roughly into position 
Um, it doesn't matter if it's not perfect. And you can hit R for resize to resize this shape. If you space by now to your top view, you can see that it's kind of annoying to have to resize your cylinder like this. So another way of doing it is to control the vertices or dots at the edge of the cylinder. So to, to show those, you can hold down right click, which brings up this scary menu. You can see things like um, edge and face and something here called a vertex. If I go into vertex and hit let go on vertex, let go of my mouse, you can then see all the purple dots. I can no longer move the shape in one go, but I can drag select these purple dots like this, hit W for move, and then move them on their own to the end of the sword roughly, without having to worry about what's happening over here. To come out of this mode, you hold down right click and release on object mode. When the lines go green, you know that everything's pretty normal and you can move your shapes around uh, like, like normal. Now we'll move on to the blade. We're going to create this sort of small uh, blade here. We will need to jump to the top view for this. I'm going to hit spacebar and hit the spacebar over the top view. And I'm going to need to create a plane or a flat square, not a cube, but a flat square. So I go to create polygon primitives. I'm now going to hold control shift and release on the plane. That has now appeared on my shelf. So I'll click on this plane here and I'm going to drag it to match this sort of shape here. So I'm going to click on the sort of corner point down here and then drag to create this kind of shape. I can't see where the other corner point is at this end, but I'll estimate and I'll make sure it's about as high as that so that it doesn't go above these edges here. We'll worry about this piece and this piece later on. So I've now got a bit of a problem where I can't see through this shape. So if I wanted to like have this over the lines and stuff, you can't see your drawing through this anymore. The quickest way to solve this is to go to shading just here and go to X-ray. You can now kind of see through your geometry as you're modeling it, which is really useful. So for the sake of this tutorial, I am going to turn this off to, and to make things clearer, I will temporarily change the opacity of this gray color here. If you want to do the same thing, you can go to the attributes editor, go to the, there'll be a shader called Lambert one, which is the default shader. And I'll say, I want the default shader to be maybe a bit darker, um, but maybe a bit more transparent like this. And it's obviously a bit clearer for you guys to see what I'm doing. It's just a bit darker than the X-ray default mode. So now I want to match this square to the shape of this blade here. I'll hold down right click and go over to vertex mode again and let go on vertex mode. It brings up your purple dots at the corners of your geometry. I will drag select or click on the corner dot over here and I'll use the arrows to line it up there. Instead of using the arrows, you could use the hollow square here or directly click on the vertex. Those of you that have used Illustrator before, you'll be used to just clicking on a dot and moving it straight away. In Maya though, you have to first click on a vertex, then let go of the mouse, and then click and drag it a second time. I'm going to estimate the angle of the sword over here so that these two lines are parallel. We now want to extrude or grow out these three edges here so that they go right the way to the sharp edge of the blade. To do this, we need to go to uh, edge mode first. So you can hold down right click and release on edge mode. You can then see that you're able to select the individual edges of your shape. So we now need to add the extrude button to your shelf. To do this, go to edit mesh. And now while holding control shift, go down to extrude and let go on extrude you will then see the extrude button added to your shelf. So make sure you're in edge mode first and then click on this edge here. So it goes orange, this edge at the bottom, and then this edge on the right. So this edge, this edge, and this edge should all be orange now. The top edge should still be bright blue. Now go to your extrude button and click on that. And you won't immediately see anything change. You'll see this menu will pop up here and your arrows will go a little bit different. Um, you want to choose the arrow that's perpendicular to your edge, which happens to be this green arrow at the moment. If you drag that green arrow down, do not click on the cube, but click on the green arrow. Ignore the cubes, you don't need them. But the arrow will allow you to extrude these edges out. And you can see as you drag the bottom edge down, the two side edges grow out um, in the same way, which is really useful. But you can see the edges don't line up perfectly with the corners. So I'm going to go to vertex mode again. That's right click, let go on vertex, drag select that vertex, hit W for move and kind of line it up with the edge of the uh, blade 
like that so that all the lines match up. So we now want to add this sort of raised area here and this area here, but if we are in edge mode or whatever, we can see that we can't actually select that piece of edge on its own. It just has the whole edge selected. So we need to add more detail or lines to this geometry. To do this, we need to add a new really important tool to our shelf. It's the insert edge loop tool. If you go up to mesh tools and then let go on insert edge loop, you'll see that appear on your shelf. So you can be in object mode for this, as long as you've clicked on your geometry and you can see the lines are green. Or you can be in edge mode where the lines are already blue. You can then click on the insert edge loop button. To use this tool is a bit picky. You have to move your mouse exactly over one of these edges like this and then drag and don't let go of your mouse until the, uh, there's a line roughly in the right place. I'm just going to focus on the top area here. I'm ignoring what's happening down here with the rest of the line. It's all going at weird angles, don't worry. But focus on where you want the points to be at the top. So I need a point here. I will let go and I will need a point here and now I'll let go and the, I want something to change direction here so I'll click and hold and then let go and I will also need a point here so obviously if I want to sort of change the angle of this sword I could drag it up like that so I'll add another point here and let go so I can move this vertex up there later on and I'll add another line here ready for later on so I can add drag a vertex up here. I'll come back to this one in a minute. I'm going to show you that we can extrude this as well. So we need to escape this tool. So otherwise at the moment we'll be adding edge loops forever. I've been unable to escape. Even if you mash the escape key on the keyboard, you'll still be adding edge loops. So to come out of the edge loop tool, you have to click on your mouse or cursor selection button up here. The easiest way to get to that is simply to hit Q on the keyboard. That's Q for Quebec and or Q for quit and you get back to your move tool. You can now go to your vertex mode and drag select a vertex or maybe hold shift and drag select two vertices and hit W for move and move them up to match the edge of your blade like this. So that's one way of adding detail to the edge of a shape. Another way is simply to extrude. So I haven't yet added a line here ready for the top edge of this blade. What we can instead do is go to edge mode, click on the top edge here, hit extrude and use the green arrow and move this edge all the way up to here so that this edge lines up neatly. Now you can hold down right click and go to vertex mode, drag select this vertex and move it over to there. Don't worry about the edges down here, in fact I am just going to move that into the guard a little bit. So that's like the main shape done now. I will now stray away from the design of this Final Fantasy sword to show you how to add holes inside geometry, which students often find a bit of a challenge. I'm just going to pretend I need like a hole here or something in the sword. So I'll get my edge loop tool from up here and I'm going to drag an edge for where I want the top of the hole to be. I'll drag an edge for where I want the side of the hole to be. And... I'll drag another edge where I want the back of the hole to be, let's say there. I can now go to vertex mode and I can maybe make the back edge here slightly straighter like this. And I can maybe move these together. If you ever want any edges to be perfectly straight, you can simply drag select them like this and hit R on the keyboard for resize and sort of squash them together. That way they're perfectly vertical like that. I can now go to face mode click on the that was right click face at the bottom and you can now select all the little faces that make up this sword I want to click on this face here and I'll hit delete on the keyboard now the sword has a hole in it like that let's say it's part of the design we're going to come out of our top view now so at the bottom here you can see we're stuck in the top view let's check this out in the 3d view we're going to hit the space bar and hit the space bar again in our perspective view I'm now going to go to object mode so I can move the whole sword up a bit. So you're going to hold down right click, go to object mode, let go. And move the sword up roughly into the middle of the cube of the guard there. And that should do for now. We're now going to give this sort of thickness. At the moment it's paper thin. So to add thickness to a shape like this, you simply have to go to face mode. And you could drag select all the faces. But even easier I find, you can just double click on any single face. And then all of the faces are selected, all the connected faces. You can then extrude with the extrude tool. 
And now you find the blue arrow. This is really important. You have to find the blue arrow. This means that whatever way the blue arrow is facing is the way you have to extrude your geometry. If you try and extrude your geometry the other way, it kind of all goes inverted. So just for now, drag your geometry up about this much, just for the focus for now on the thickness of the, maybe like the back of the blade here. We'll make this edge sharp um, later on. I'm temporarily gonna change my opacity of this so I can see what I'm doing. I am looking for something called Lambert 1. One of these tabs should be Lambert 1. There's so many tabs now because we've been doing things to this shape. Every time we um, create something on this shape, it adds a new tab. There's too many of them and so it's very hard to find my Lambert 1. So this might be a good time to go up to here and hit delete history. And this button will then clear out all of this sort of, all of these history tabs. It won't undo any of our hard work, but it'll sort of make Maya forget that we ever did it and in the first place. And uh, it just cleans it up and can also solve, prevent weird problems from happening later on. And now it only gives us the most important tabs that make up our geometry and the color of it. I'm now gonna put the transparency back down so I can clearly see the sword. I'm now gonna to go to face mode and I want to select all the faces along the what should be the sharp edge of this sword. To select these faces, you could hold shift and click on them one by one, but we'll be here all day. So what I prefer to do is click on a face and move to the farthest edge that I want to click on, which for me is this edge here. And if you double click on the far edge, one, two, you can see that it then selects all of the edges in between. So that was if you click on any edge and double click on an edge, that's in the same sort of row as it, but further away, it connects all the ones in between as well, or selects all the ones in between. So that's one edge there, shift, double click, you've now got all those selected. With those selected, you can hit R for resize on the keyboard, and using the green cube at the top, crush these faces down so they're completely zero in, in height really, and the edge of the sword is perfectly uh, flat like this. So you can see here I've actually made a mistake underneath the sword it selected all sorts of weird edges so actually I'm going to undo this now with command Z and I'm going to try that again. If this ever happens maybe I accidentally selected the wrong loop of shapes or something. So I'm just going to double click along there and if you hit 4 on the keyboard it's a good way of just checking there's no other weird faces selected. Um, there's not now. Um, if you keep having mistakes you can just maybe hold shift and select them one by one. Now I'm going to do our three size, crush these down, and that's looking a lot better. That's quite sharp on the edges now. There's a problem though. These are faces that have zero size, and they still secretly exist within the sharp edge of this blade. So if I go to vertex mode, click on a vertex, hit W for move, you can see that actually there is a hidden face inside there. This can cause all sorts of problems later on, like inverted edges like this. Um, and problems with exporting to game engines where they don't like faces with zero geometry area. So we want to sort of merge these vertices that are super close together, together, so that the Maya sees it as only one vertex and the faces are essentially deleted. To do that, I'm gonna to go to my top view and I'm gonna select all of the vertices along the sharp edge of this blade that we know that we've just merged together. I'm gonna to hit four on the keyboard to clearly see uh, what's going on. So. I could use the marquee selection tool to drag a box like this over the edges I want to delete. Or you could also use this tool here, which sort of allows you to create like any kind of selection shape um, that you want. So I'll just show you with that sort out of the way. Um, so you can use the this tool here to sort of, in vertex mode, drag select sort of the bunch of vertices you would like. I'm going to hold shift and do these guys as well. So it's just the ones on the sharp edge of the blade like that. I'm now going to go back to my selection tool, spacebar back to my 3D view, and I'm going to do this. I'm going to go to edit mesh and then go down to merge and then let go. It won't look like anything's happened. You'll see a little menu pop up. This will control how far away the vertices need to be before they merge, but you can now go back to object mode. If you just hold down right click and go to object mode, that menu disappears. And then go back to vertex mode again, click on a single vertex on the edge, you can see now that these two vertices have been combined, which is really handy. You have to do this on the edges of the sword. The next tool we need to add to our shelf is the bridge tool. So let's pretend that you chose to put a hole into this geometry after you had made it 3D. This is something that my students really struggle with. So I'm just gonna temporarily delete the edges on the inside of this, and you might wanna try this too. So to delete, I'm gonna select a loop of faces again. I'm gonna click on one face. Then if you 
shift double click next door it selects a whole ring of faces like this so if you see, i can maybe show you in this view you can sort of see all the faces are selected in a loop that will shift double click next door uh, for that to happen i'm now going to hit delete um, just to show you what you would have to do if you wanted to put a hole in later on so this would be like clicking on a face over here and hitting delete on that one hitting delete on that one you're left with these empty faces that you'd have to then fill in so to fill these faces in you simply go to your mesh tools and let's hold command shift on edit mesh and let go on bridge now go back to edge mode and if you double click on that on the bottom loop of edges down here and then you shift double click on the top edges up here so you've got two opposing rings of edges you can hit the bridge button and it will then join up those faces so the sword is no longer hollow to make our sword look more realistic uh, we need to bevel it so any sort of 90 degree edges like this are far too sharp to be realistic like this edge here and um, in real life this would be slightly curved as it was crafted so we're going to click on the whole sword in object mode so it's gone green and we'll go to edit mesh and we're going to go to com hold command shift or control shift and let go on bevel and if you click on bevel like this with the whole sword selected you can see it sort of doubles up all of those edges and if you look really closely they are at like a 45 degree angle now we're going to want to change the width of these edges so that they're a bit closer together and have control over this bevel that we just did if you used the bevel tool from the standard poly modeling menu you'll notice that when you hit bevel a menu comes up like this allowing you to change the size of the bevels on the fly annoyingly if you add it from the shelf it doesn't work like we just did so um it, this is a known glitch in maya that they haven't fixed for the last uh, 10 years which is really irritating so for now if we go to our attribute editor which is the middle button up here like that or it says attribute editor down the side one of these tabs will say poly bevel one if you have difficulty finding it you might have to use this forward arrow here do not delete history though we actually this is part of the history now that we need to go in and change after um, we've done it so look for something called poly bevel one and you'll see it eventually and now you can change the fraction which is the amount of the bevel so if you drag the fraction to the left the bevel becomes a lot smaller and quite tight and if you drag the fraction up too high the better the sword will look kind of uh, kind of weird so I'm going to drag the fraction down so the edges are quite sharp I'll drag it down to like 0 0.085 that'll be fine I'm just going to quickly show you how to put the proper bevel tool on your shelf so if I want to steal the bevel button from the other menu you can do this you can go to poly modeling right click on the bevel button go to edit and copy this text here with Control C go to your own tab right click on this bevel button hit edit and if you triple select, triple click on this text here, or make sure the whole thing's drag selected, you can hit Control V to replace it with this new bevel command, and then close it down. Now, if you were to click on another shape and hit bevel, you are then able to change um, the size of the bevel on the fly. You have now learned all the tools needed to create the rest of this sword. So you could um, probably just stop watching the tutorials right now and attempt it yourself, or watch the next video to see how I do it.